Welcome to Yeda Center, where we share knowledge on topics related to management and technology. I'm Yael, and I'm happy to have Yuda Holtzman here with me today. Today we have a short session for you about Net Promoter Score, NPS in short. I must admit that I heard about the NPS index only recently. Yael, I have to say that my response was similar to yours when I learned about the NPS a few years ago, and I will elaborate shortly on the way I used it, yet I suggest we dive straight into explaining what is NPS. So the Net Promoter Score, the NPS, is a measure intended to represent the level of the customer loyalty to a product or a service or the company. This index is based on a survey of one single question, which was found to be most reliable in its representation of loyalty. The scale for the answer is between 0 and 10. And the question is... On a scale of 0 to 10, how likely are you to recommend our product to a friend or colleagues? That's it. I used product, yet obviously this can be replaced with a service or a company. So just one question? Yes, indeed. One question. But as one who used the NPS many times as part of a customer survey, in all cases, we added additional questions, which I will further discuss in just a few minutes. The use of the NPS is very common worldwide, and it enables companies to examine and compare their scores relative to competing companies in the same industry, and this is very powerful in the case we obtain our competitors' NPS. Yet in addition, we can also measure ourselves over the years using the NPS, which will provide us a good view of our improvements. Based on several studies, the standard customer surveys do not necessarily reflect the real customer opinion and are therefore less effective. With the NPS, the willingness of customers to recommend a product or service or company to friends and colleagues is a reliable indication of their satisfaction. This is since when providing a personal recommendation they take a kind of risk by virtue of the recommendation being personal. Therefore, I can say that the NPS is also a tool for forecasting growth. What you're actually saying is that if there was an improvement in the score compared to a previous measurement, there is a high chance that this will also be reflected in a future business growth? Yes. Many studies have shown that the NPS index results are correlated with future business growth. So if you are looking for a more scientific way than to rely on online reviews in order to understand the power of your brand, NPS is a simple and effective metric to use. And as I've already mentioned, one of its great advantages is the ability to test your product or company results against competitors. So how do we calculate the NPS? So I'll be using product as the item we are evaluating and as indicated before, you can replace it with a service or company. Customers should rate the product following the NPS question on a scale of zero to 10. Once you have the results, you need to categorize them into three categories and calculate each one of them as a percentage from the overall number of responses. And after that, it's really simple. The first category are the detractors. Anyone who scores six or below is considered a detractor. Those are not particularly thrilled by the product. Second category are the passives. Anyone who scores 7 or 8 is considered passive. And the last category are the promoters. Anyone who scores 9 or 10 is considered a promoter. NPS equals number of promoters 
minus number of detractors divide by number of responses. All that times 100 to get the number in percentage. In other words, and maybe actually even simpler, the NPS equal the number of promoters in percentage minus number of detractors in percentage. That's it. Let's use the following example. 100 customer responses were received, 10 responses were in the range 0 to 6, meaning detractors, and they are 10%. 20 responses scored 7 or 8, those are the passives, and they are 20%. 70 responses scored 9 or 10, those are the promoters, they are 70 out of 100, so they are 70%. To calculate the NPS score, 10% detractors should be deducted from 70% promoters, which equal 60%. The score is always shown only as an integer, so the NPS result in this case is simply 60. The NPS score can also, by the way, be negative, and it ranges from minus 100 to plus 100. I'd like to go over the calculation. We calculate the percentage of detractors' responses and subtract it from the percentage of the promoter's responses. And the result obtained is the NPS. This is very simple. Let me add that this example will be available on our website as part of this podcast and video. Within our customer organization, at whom should we target this survey? The survey with the NPS question should target those who decide how much to use your product, if at all, meaning the end customers, those that are actually using the product and who are directly exposed to its advantages and disadvantages. You know, large customers have several layers of decision makers, from users to IT, procurement, finance, and then management. But the most important ones are the end users, those who, without their recommendation, you will have hard time to sell or renew licenses. If this year will be the first time we run a survey, which includes the NPS, the number we will obtain will not tell us much since we, we have no history to compare it to. And also, we will probably not know the NPS score of our competitors. And the meaning is that we will have to wait another year to see if we have improved. This is indeed a challenge. But I can share from my own experience. When we ran the NPS for the first time as part of the customer survey, even though we did not have any history to compare to, we did compare the results that were obtained from different sales regions and also compared results from different verticals. In some cases, for example, comparing results based on geography region, such as, say, North America and Europe, the difference was significant. And other questions, including in the survey, helped us to pinpoint issues that explain the difference, such that we could conclude on actions we need to take related to the territory which obtained a lower NPS, and obviously improved later on its results. Even though I will not elaborate further on the topic of customer surveys, it is important to take the opportunity when evaluating the NPS and add questions in order to assist us in understanding where we need to improve. There are many good online tools to run NPS surveys, some of which you can program in regards to which question will appear once the participant submit his NPS, meaning the question that the participant will see after he submits his NPS answer depends on the actual result obtained. Therefore, the additional questions I have listed will appear depending on the score received. And let's go over some examples. 
So sort of a generic question that can follow up on the NPS question can be, what is the main reason for your score? This should be an open question and will provide us some additional information why he provided the, the score he did. Another example can be, what was disappointing in your experience with our product? Or how can we improve your experience? Those type of questions should also be an open questions and they are addressing those that are detractors or passives. We want to learn why did they provide us a low score. Last example, which features do you value the most? This type of question can be either open or multiple choice type question. I strongly recommend to hear our session on customer success. The type of information received from the questions I just listed can be used as a great trigger to initiate discussions with the replying customers. So to summarize this short but really important session, we discussed about the importance of NPS, the Net Promoter Score. We provided its definition and reviewed an example. We also demonstrated how to leverage the first time we obtain NPS results. This is the opportunity to invite you all to our website, yetacenter.com, to hear and view both podcasts and videos addressing management and technology topics. Thank you, Yuda Oltzman, for joining us. Thank you, Yael. Mm-hmm.